in this video we'll be discussing how to interpret an audiogram so whenever a patient of hearing loss comes to us a pure tone audiometry of a patient is done and then an audiogram is plotted so basically in an audiogram there are different frequencies at which the air conduction and the bone conduction thresholds are uh, checked for the patient and they are plotted on the graph and this is a audiogram and as we know that the air conduction and bone conduction changes are different in different types of hearing loss so based on this thresholds we can know the type of hearing loss so in this video first we'll be discussing what changes of air conduction bone conduction occurs in different types of hearing losses then we'll study some basic steps to read an audiogram and then we solve some problems of audiogram to get hack over it so the first is the air conduction and bone conduction changes in conductive hearing loss as well as sensorineural hearing loss so let's say this is the outer ear this is the inner middle, middle ear and this is the inner ear so the air conduction are the sound waves that are coming from the outer ear going through the middle ear and then entering the inner, inner ear which are then uh, taken through the auditory pathway to the auditory cortex whereas the bone conduction refers to the sound waves that travel through the skull bones directly to the inner ear uh, which are then transmitted to the auditory cortex now if a conducting hear hearing loss occurs so let's say there is a blockage in the outer in the middle ear in that case the air conduction will not be able to travel to the inner ear whereas the bone conduction can travel through the bone through the to the inner ear so in case of a conductive hearing loss the air conduction will be decreased whereas the bone conduction will be normal whereas in sensorineural hearing loss there is blockage either in the middle ear or distal to it so in that case the air conduction will be affected as it is passing through the inner ear also the bone conduction will be affected so in a sensorineural hearing loss the air conduction will decrease as well as the bone conduction will decrease now what will happen if both conducting loss and sensorineural hearing loss occurs together so there is a blockage present here also as well as there is a blockage present here also so again in this case also the air conduction will be decreased and also the bone conduction will be decreased but then how will we differentiate whether the patient has a sensorineural hearing loss or the patient has a sensorineural plus conductive hearing loss in sensorineural hearing loss the air conduction is decreasing the bone conduction is decreasing in sensorineural hearing loss plus conductive hearing loss the air conduction is decreasing but the decrease in air conduction is much more than decrease in bone conduction why because the air conduction is decreasing both due to the conductive hearing loss as well as due to sensorineural hearing loss there is a blockage here as well as here so the air conduction is being blocked due to both whereas the bone conduction is being decreased only due to sensorineural hearing loss so there will be less decrease in bone conduction as compared to the air conduction so if we calculate the difference between the air conduction and bone conduction in both the cases it will be less in the sensorineural hearing loss whereas it will be more in case of the sensorineural hearing loss plus conductive hearing loss so if this gap is less than 15 then we think of sensorineural hearing loss whereas if this gap is more than 15 then we think think of it as combined hearing loss that is both sensorineural and conductive and this gap between the air conduction and bone conduction is known as the air bone gap now to decrease the confusion of how the air conduction bone conduction changes in different types of hearing losses you can use a line diagram so this two lines represent the external and the middle ear and this circle represents the inner ear and this is the air conduction and this is the bone conduction so in conductive hearing loss if the blockage is here the air conduction will be affected whereas the bone conduction will go smoothly in sensorineural hearing loss the blockage is somewhat here so both air conduction and bone conduction will decrease in combined hearing loss again now the blockage is here as well as here so the air conduction will decrease due to both so the air conduction decrease will be much more than the bone conduction decrease so this is how the air conduction and bone conduction changes in different hearing losses now how to read an audiogram so this is how a normal audiogram this is how a audiogram looks like now the first thing that you need to check is the color of the line that is if the line of the color is blue or it is red the red color represents the right ear and the blue color represents the 
left ear you can remember it as r for red and r for right the second thing you need to say is what sign is being mentioned on the line uh, as you can see that the if there is a o sign or a x sign it represents the air conduction or if there are brackets represented then it represents the bone conduction like in this there is a blue line representing the left ear and this x or cross sign represents the air conduction in the left ear whereas this red line represents the right ear and this circle represents that the this is the air conduction of the right side and how you can remember it as from air conduction a you can uh, remember a as absent and you know that whenever someone is absent we either mark him as zero or we mark him as cross so how this is how can remember the uh, symbols for the air conduction and the brackets that we are using they can easily be converted into a b so uh, the brackets represent the bone conduction now once you check the first two points then you will see that if the uh, threshold line is above 25 decibels or it is below 25 decibels so in this graph the 25 decibels will be somewhat here and this uh, blue line is lying below 25 decibels whereas this red line is lying above 25 decibels the 25 decibel is the normal threshold so if the threshold is more than 25 decibel it means the patient has a hearing loss so in this case the right ear air conduction is decreased because it is below 25 decibel whereas the left ear air conduction is normal because it is less than 25 decibel so this is how you can read an audiogram now based on this you can check whether the patient has a conductive hearing loss a sensorineural hearing loss or a combined hearing loss if the air conduction is decreased whereas the bone conduction is normal then it is conductive hearing loss if the air conduction is decreased as well as the bone conduction is decreased it can either be a sensorineural or a combined hearing loss in that case we will check for the air bone gap if it is more than 15 then it is combined whereas if it is less than 15 then it is sensorineural hearing loss to get a good hack over it now we will discuss discussing some problems so this is the first problem now let's say this this is a line representing the 25 decibel this is the blue line with the cross sign so it is the left ear representing the air conduction and as it is below 25 decibel it represents this there is a normal air conduction of the left ear now the red line the uh, represents the right ear with circle representing the air conduction and as it is below 25 decibel so it 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 is showing that the air conduction of the right ear is abnormal so this is one interpretation that we can get from this graph now from this audiogram the these two lines are similar and two new lines have been plotted one is the blue line this one and this one is the red line this one the above blue line has bracket so it is representing the bone conduction of the left ear and as it is less than 25 decibel so it is normal similarly these brackets with the red line will represent the red ear bone conduction and as it is again less than 25 decibel so the bone conduction is normal for the both the ears so we can get a interpretation that the left ear has a normal ear conduction as well as a normal bone conduction so the left ear is normal whereas the right ear has decreased air conduction whereas normal bone conduction so if we make a line diagram with decreased air conduction whereas a normal bone conduction so this is the right ear conductive hearing loss so this is the first problem now in the next problem again we can see the lines let's say this is the 25 decibel threshold now we can see that there are two red lines and there are two blue lines on the red line there is a bone conduction as well as the air conduction the air conduction bone conduction are both more than 25 decibels similarly the blue line showing the air conduction and the bone conduction again the both are more than 25 decibels as they are as the air conduction bone conduction both are decreased we need to check the air bone gap to differentiate if it is a SNHL only or it is a combining loss in this case we can see that the air bone gap 
is almost zero as the lines are coinciding with each other so in this case the patient has a bilateral sensorineural hearing loss now the third problem in this case we can see two blue lines the above blue line with a bracket representing the bone conduction of the left ear whereas the lower line with the cross representing the air conduction of the left ear and this is the 25 decibel so we can see that both bone conduction and air conduction are above 25 decibel so air conduction is decreased as well as the bone conduction decreased now we have two differential either it can be SNHL or it can be SNHL plus CHL so what will we do now we will check for the airborne gap and we can see this the difference between the air between the bone and the air line is more than 15 decibels here so in this case it will be a combined hearing loss that is both SNHL plus CHL one thing that you need to see is the bone gap here is not more than 15 decibel so you have to check for the maximum bone gap in the whole graph wherever if anywhere in the graph there is a bone gap air bone gap more than 15 decibel then it is a combined hearing loss